Time to meet the men from the ministry. Join us once more on the Ministry Merry Go Round with Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham, Nicolette McKenzie, and the men from the ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Guyler. Ministry staff are ready and willing. A few ready to work and the rest willing to let them. <laughs> In the General Assistance Department, Lennox Brown and Secretary Mildred are bearing the brunt at the moment as they grapple with London's traffic problems. There's a complaint from the City Bus Company, sir. You told them to take 12 standing upstairs on their Route 247. I did, Mildred, yes. We need less people in cars and more on public transport. The bus companies must cooperate. Well, they've tried it for a week, but they say it's caused problems. Well, Twelve people standing on top, how has that caused problems? On that route, they're single-decker buses. <laughs> no, there's always some feeble excuse. Well, it seems it's affected their business, sir. Passengers are falling off. <laughs> people have no social conscience, you know. Well, you can't force them to use the buses. Of course we can force them, Mildred. Of course we can. I shall instruct the police to flag down all moving cars in that area, and when they pull up, the wardens can book them for parking. <laughs> Immobilize vehicles and lock up the drivers. That's the way to keep the traffic moving. Don't you agree to? Uh, 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 what did you say, man? Uh, cars, too. Do you, do you favor an embargo? No, I prefer British cars. <laughs> oh, Glory, what's the matter with you? You don't seem to be with us. I was, uh, I was thinking out a problem. Oh, go on. You were daydreaming, wasn't you? Was I? Well, you must have been. You just dipped a pen in your teacup and put sugar in the ink. <laughs> well, I'm a bit tired, that's all. Yes, but you're always tired. Are you sleeping properly at night? You haven't lapsed into your bad old ways, are you? Staying up for the ten o'clock news. <laughs> No, I go to bed quite early. There's nothing else to do. Nothing to do? Sometimes I feel quite desperate. It's the same at the office. There's never anything to do. Well, what are you talking about? There's work to be done. Well, I'm not that desperate. <laughs> but somehow things are passing me by. I feel like a poonstone pushed to the side of life's plate. What on earth's come over you two? Oh, don't worry. I get these moods, you know. Perhaps it's because I'm not fully extended. Not... Fully extended. Well, I think I'll take a walk and stretch my legs. Oh, well, that's a start, I suppose. <laughs> I'll go and see if this month's staff magazine's in yet. If it is, I can draw moustaches on the photos. <laughs> Job it on. What you have in the knee of it? Very odd. Did he even finish his tea? Yeah, and that was only his fourth cup. <laughs> I'll pop it back in the pot. Keep it warm for later. <laughs> Well, we'd better get on, Mildred. The permanent undersecretary wants progress on these traffic problems. Oh, trust Sir Gregory. He's always making trouble. Well, to be fair, he's being subjected to a great deal of pressure. Well, he should either drink less or wear wider trousers. <laughs> I mean... I mean that the traffic experts say London's on the brink of disaster. Now you two. Good Lord, another pot of tea? Uh, no thanks, Sir Gregory. No, we haven't finished this one. <laughs> But uh, do come in, sir. We're uh, busy on the traffic scheme. I'm glad to hear it. Mainly parking and access, you know, yes. We've already created a lot of turns in Turnham Green and a lot of bays in Bayswater. And you're now working on... Cockfusters. <laughs> I see. But the big problem is moving transport. What about the new buses? Ah, you mean the larger ones, Sir Gregory? Well, of course I mean the yes. larger ones. I told you last year that bigger buses would carry more people and ease the congestion. Indeed you did, sir. Indeed you did, yes. The larger buses were ordered immediately and will come into service next week. The specifications were drawn up by my colleague and by myself. Mm. Where is Lamb, by the way? Ah, he's uh, extending himself. Uh, I'm uh, stretching his... Uh, what was he stretching, Mildred? He's going to admin, sir, to uh, mark up some papers. Ha! Ah, more likely skulking in the canteen. I'm told he sat there all Monday afternoon watching the plastic oranges go round. <laughs> yes, but he does seem a little out of sorts lately, sir. Hanging around like a drooping daffodil. There are redundancies coming, you know. Redundancies, Sir Gregory? No, you... The oh. government spending oh. acts. Heads are going to roll. Lamb's head might even bounce. <laughs> 
You'd better tell him to pull his socks up. Oh, it's nasty. I wonder what's wrong with Mr. Lyon. He's at a funny age, Mildred. Mm. Life's glittering prizes have eluded him. And he's got no hobbies to divert him, is he? That's what he needs, Mr. Lennox Brown. A good hobby. Mm. Something to get involved in. Yes, well, you're right, of course. But, I mean, would he ever make the effort? Well, he would if we started him off, sir. Now, the civil service handbook's somewhere here. It lists all the club's leisure activities. Yeah, but should we interfere, Mildred? It isn't really our business, you see. It is, sir. If he got the sack for being too boring, we'd get a stranger here. Might be one of them whiz kids making work for all of us. Oh, by Jove, you're right there, Mildred. Yes, yes, it's our duty to help, Mr. Lamb. Yes, right. indeed, yes. Give him a hand through this tricky time. Yes. Now, what sort of things do the club offer? Ah, uh, well, let's see. Yes. Uh, well, there's hang gliding. That's very trendy. Would that be suitable for Mr. Lamb? It says here it calls for intelligence and initiative. Never mind. Try something else. There's a water skiing club. Water skiing needs skill, grace and stamina. Pity. <laughs> Any other sections? Stamp collecting group? No, 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 no. Philately will get him nowhere, no. <laughs> no, uh, he, he needs something active, you see. I've got it. What? Ballroom dancing. <laughs> For both the young and the not-so-young, the passport to social success. I'm afraid Mr. Lamb lost his passport years ago. <laughs> but no, no, wait a minute, Mildred, no. That's just the thing. Tuesday evening classes with Mr. Manley. My friend Dawn says they're very good. That's it, then. That's it, if we can persuade Mr. Lamb to join. Yes. I'm that one. Is it time to go home yet? Certainly not. There's work to be done. And I warned you, too. I warned you, Sir Gregory has noticed you're not pulling your weight. I thought Sir Gregory liked me these days. He actually smiled at me yesterday. Sir Gregory smiled at you. Well, it was more of a laugh, really. When I caught my head in the lift gate. <laughs> Mildred and I are worried about you, too. Oh? Mm. Yes. It's clear that you're going through a very difficult time. And we would like to help. Don't need any help. Well, we think you do. And you need a, a stimulating hobby. Better relaxation means better work. Well, if I went home now, I could start relaxing at once. Look, we think you should join the Civil Service Dancing Club, Mr. Lamb. Dancing? Me? You were dancing like a maniac at the Christmas party. Well, Miss Clegg spilled hot punch in my lap. <laughs> oh, nonsense, too. You're a natural mover. They have classes on Tuesday evenings. All the fun people go. Old Mrs. Moss from Social Security and Mr. Jolly from Pensions. They're a real swinging crowd. Tuesday evenings? You mean I'd be doing it in my own time? I wouldn't dream of it. It says there's free tea and biscuits at the end of each session. Well, I suppose I could give it a try. You try it next Tuesday, Mr. Lamb. I hear Mr. Manley's a very good teacher. A real man about town. Right, let's do it again. No music this time, Sydney. All right, Mr. Manley. <laughs> and away we go. Back sides together. Back sides together. Back sides together. Back side kick. No! Oh! <laughs> Mr. Lamb, what are you doing? You kicked Mr. Jolly. I'm awfully sorry, my foot slipped. I, I'm new to this sort of thing. I can see that, Ducky. Dancing should be a matter of grace and bodily charm. With you, it's a matter of grievous bodily harm. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Yield to the rhythm, Mr. Lamb. Imagine you're a field of wheat yielding to the first kiss of the summer breeze. I'm not sure that I can. Why ever not? I get this awful hay fever. Oh. <laughs> Miss Proudfoot. Miss Proudfoot, could you help Mr. Lamb show him the steps and try to stop him falling over? Oh, gosh, yes. I'll have a go. Just... Do as I do, Mr. Lamb. Try it again, class. And, Miss Lusty, there's no need to throw up your skirt every time you turn. This isn't the can-can. Oh, oh, dear. I'm sorry, Mr. Manley. The rhythm is so... Oh, oh, it's so sensuous. I always get carried away, you know. <laughs> but this week, the poor does not here to carry you away. So try not to tie yourself out. Right. Just moving to the rhythm once more. And forward sides together and turn. Watch yourself on the turn, Sydney. Forward sides together. Forward sides together. 
you gave me new confidence, Miss Proudfoot. Oh, do call me Lydia. <laughs> and uh, can I call you Rupert? Uh, yes, if you want to. Actually, my name's Richard. <laughs> Gosh, silly me. <laughs> well, your dancing's improving by leaps and bounds. <laughs> we ought to go in for the Golden Ballroom Cup. Golden Ballroom Cup? You know, the National Dancing Contest, finals at the Albert Hall. Oh, yes, I've seen it on TV, but... Would we be good enough for that? We wouldn't know till we'd tried, would we? Pick a nice, simple dance, yes. then most evenings we could come down here to the club room and run through it. Uh, run through the club room? <laughs> run through the dance with the gramophone, and we could practice during the day when things are quiet in our offices. <laughs> uh, which department are you with? I'm basically with the environment gang, but I'm helping the tourist board, encouraging local attractions to bring more tourists to Britain. How interesting. Well, one feels one's contributing, you know. <clears throat> Last week, I was down in Upjohn St. Mary for the marrow dangling. Were you really? <laughs> Any news of those road signs, Mildred? Ah, uh, yes, sir. There's a list here from the GOC showing where they put them. Mm -hmm. Um, who uh, What are road bears? Are they dangerous? Road bears? This sign here, look. Hmm? Oh, Mildred, that sign says road bears left. <laughs> it doesn't mean road bears left, it means road bears left. Oh, I see. <laughs> oh, uh, good. Um, hello, Mr. Uh, and you, Miss... Uh, um, oh, uh... Hello, it's Wither Wilkins. I was... Um, just on my way to the, um, washroom. Yes, well, can we help you, Mr. Wilkins? Oh, I can usually find it on my own, thanks. <laughs> you know, I just thought I'd pop in to be, um, neighbourly, you know. Yes, very nice, but I mean, we're fairly busy at the moment tackling London's traffic flow. We've had all these signs put up in the street. Oh, my word, that one's unusual. That's to warn motorists in Putney High Street. Children cross here. I wonder what makes them so angry. <laughs> oh, well, this is a, a useful reminder. Beware elderly people. Yes, some of those old folk can turn quite vicious. <laughs> I hear you're off for a month, Mr. Wilkins. Yes, that's right. I've been sent on a course for bright young executives. That uh, conference place down in... Uh, in uh... Surrey? No, I'm quite pleased. <laughs> It would be a chance to get away from all the hurly-burly, which um, reminds me I'd better get back to my office. Uh, I've been to the washroom, you know. Well, it seems less vague today. Didn't say his usual goodbye to the hat stand. I wonder how Mr. Lamb got on at his dancing class. Do you think he'll keep it up? Well, I'll say this for him. He's not one of those who start off keen and then get apathetic. Mr. Lamb's apathetic from the start. <laughs> morning, Mum. Morning, Mildred. What a wonderful day. Oh, I can't believe it. I'd like you to know I'm a new man today. Well, any change would be an improvement. <laughs> How was the dancing class? Splendid. You were right, Mum. I do have a natural talent. Well done, Mr. Lamb. At the end of the evening, I showed Mr. Manley my reverse chassis, and he was amazed. <laughs> He said he'd never seen anything like it. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Enjoy your leisure and you feel ready for work. Isn't that true? It could be. I'll tell you at once if the feeling starts. <laughs> Come on, too. Now, we've turned the corner, both with your problems and with the traffic. The new larger buses went into service first thing this morning. Oh, yes, the ones we ordered. Won't Sir Gregory be pleased? Uh, you pair of blundering half -wits. You stupid bunglers, you half-baked idle buffoons. I'm not sure that he is pleased. <laughs> when I asked you for bigger buses, I meant longer, wider, more spacious. I did not mean higher. You did not mean higher, sir. No. Your new buses are eight feet taller. Now, any fool could tell you what that means. Tell us, Sir Gregory. Every, every bridge in London now has a bus stuck under it. Oh. But you mean all the buses are stuck? Well, one driver managed to get his vehicle through. Oh, so good. He's now driving an open-top bus <laughs> with no conductor. And that's not all. 
I didn't think it would be. Those, those overhead placards welcoming the American president, they've all been torn and broken. Oh, dear. Well, they should read, London says, hello, Mr. President. And most of them now read, London says, hell. <laughs> You've wasted money on a fleet of useless buses. Oh, surely not, sir. Well, I... how can they be used if they won't go under the bridges? The answer, you see, sir, is to lower the roads. <laughs> oh, yes. I'll organize the whole thing. Just give me supreme powers and I'll go... Lennox to... Brown, are you the head of this department? No, Sir Gregory. Then don't talk like an idiot. Oh. Get rid of those buses and... And get smaller ones, understand? Yes. Smaller buses. Smaller buses. And if you make any more mistakes, I'll throw you under one. <laughs> Whether Wilkins is back from his course in the country. Yes, yes. I hear he spent most of his time gathering whortleberries for his wine making. Oh, law. No. I suppose he'd give us another bottle this Christmas. Well, if he does, Mildred, we must receive it with the same courtesy we showed last Christmas. Bury it in the window box and tell him it was delicious. <laughs> oh, hello, you two. Uh, welcome back. We haven't been anywhere, Mr. Wilkins. <laughs> really? But I haven't seen you for weeks. It's you that's been away, Mr. Wilkins, on your course. Oh, bless my soul, have I? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> well, how have you lot been getting on? I hear you had trouble. Uh, Mr. Lamb made a small error with the buses. However, I've rectified that by ordering new ones. Oh, my word, Mr. Lennox Brown, you are the man for a crisis. Whenever there's a mess up, I think of you. <laughs> Thank you. What about Mr. Lamb? We ask ourselves the same question. What about Mr. Lamb? He's become besotted with ballroom dancing. Grace and me, we scarcely see him these days. Ballroom dancing? Oh, goodness. Well, there's not much goodness involved. He's also got entangled with a woman. It's easily done when you're dancing. <laughs> I once got entangled with a microphone stand. I quite believe it, Mr. Wilkins, yes. Yeah. But what I mean is that Mr. Lamb is having a liaison. With a female woman of the opposite sex. <laughs> oh, surely not. Oh, it's true. She's his dancing partner. They're in for the Golden Ballroom Cup. It's all Mr. Lamb seems to think about now. He sleeps late to conserve his energy, and when he gets here, he goes straight to the broom cupboard. The broom cupboard? He tangles around the office with the mop. Daddy's <laughs> on a key thick course. Iron tablets morning and night. Iron tonic three times a day. If he's caught in the rain, he'll go rusty. Wasn't he involved in something last night? Oh, yeah, that dance contest. They were in the area finals. You know, really, it's incredible. A few months ago, the only dance he could do was St. Vitus's. <laughs> I don't know, this woman must have bewitched him. Morning, Mum. Mildred. Oh, hello, Wizza. Great news, everyone. Last night, Lydia and I, we did it. Really? Oh, I hope no one saw you. <laughs> The whole ballroom saw us. We won the area finals. Good. Great. We're through to the semi-finals. We're about to enjoy the fruits of success. Just don't throw the skins on the floor. <laughs> well, I mustn't stand here gossiping. It's time for my tea break. I hope your new buses do the trick. Uh, buses? Yes, two buses. You remember the traffic problems? While you've been prancing about, I had to sort out your bus error. I ordered smaller ones that would not get caught under bridges. They started in service today. Oh, good. I saw one of those big buses being towed away for scrap. <laughs> I thought, what an ugly great monster. <laughs> you saw what, Mr. Lamb? Nothing. What an ugly great monster. What? Oh, uh, uh, not you, Sir Gregory. Uh, another ugly monster. I, I mean... Uh, oh, uh, be uh, quiet, Lamb. Uh, then it's round. I believe you masterminded the new smaller buses. That is correct, sir. And are you familiar with the new metric measurements? I have a simple rule of thumb, sir. I just remember that where we once used old-fashioned yards, we now use the standard continental measurement, the centimetre. I see. <laughs> yards equal centimetres, in your view. Well, that explains it. Explains what? I mean, is there some small irregularity? Well, nothing irregular by your standards. No. It's just that you fill London with miniature buses... Five feet long and three feet high. <laughs> Five feet. At least the new buses won't stick under bridges. <laughs> no, but several are stuck under lorries. 
You hopeless morons, you bubbling, hair-brained nincompoops. If I weren't you in Downing Street, I'd strangle a pair of you. Now, we'll sort this out. I mean, we'll order new buses. Buses? Don't ever mention that word again. I've told the GLC they can run things their way. Yes. We're still under pressure from the ministers to sort out London's traffic. Get rid of the jam. Start things moving. You know what's needed? Proper traffic flow, one-way systems. Get rid of the black spot. It shall be done, sir. Yes, a pity we can't get rid of the worst black spot of all. This office. Good. Oh, well, cheer up, sir. If you make a success of this traffic scheme, Sir Gregory will forget all about the buses. Yes, well, we'd better get on with it. Uh, get the map of London, Mildred, will you? Oh. And uh, to find those plans for one-way systems. Uh, sorry, I'd like to help, but I have to get on with my dancing practice. Dancing practice? But Mildred and I will be working our fingers to the bone here. It's all right. You won't be in my way. <laughs> We're practicing at the tourist board. Lydia has time off. The, the semi-finals next month, you know. Well, spread out the map and we'll cover London with one-way schemes. Right. Now, let's have a look and see what we've got here. That yellow square is the rush hour area. Mm -hmm. These green triangles are access points. And what's this brown circle? That's where Mr. Lamb put a wet teacup. Oh. Now, I'll point out which way car should turn, and you mark left turn only or right turn only as required. Right? Yeah, you won't believe mm. it. I never know which is left and which is right. <laughs> General Assistance Department? Hello. Is Mr. Lamb there? No. Mr. Lamb is not here. In fact, Mr. Lamb is rarely here at all these days. Who is that calling? Lydia Proudfoot. I'm a chum of his. Ah, I thought so. You're involved with Mr. Lamb in this dancing escapade. Oh, that's right. We had the semifinals last night. So I gathered. He spent yesterday afternoon oiling his feet. <laughs> oh, I know who you are. You're his number one. That is correct, madam, yes. The one he calls old wind and whiskers. <laughs> Pardon? If we win, we'll leave the civil service and turn professional. I expect he's told you. No, he hasn't said that he would... Yeah. Leave the civil service? Yeah. Well, tell him uh, Lidikins rang, will you? Oh, and say I'll wear my white for the final, so he'd better get his jacket cleaned. Jolly nice talking to you. Cheerio. Mildred. Look at me. Yeah? Things are worse than I thought. Mr. Lamb's making a real fool of himself. Ah, oh, he's not having his hair done afro again. <laughs> Even worse. Even worse. His paramour says if they win next week's final, they leave the civil service. No. Yes. Oh, yes, yeah, you can see it, can't you? I mean, I taste of champagne and caviar and he'll throw it all up. <laughs> No, oh, he'll have two years tawdry glamour and then be on the scrap heap. Give up his job and his pension and become a gigolo? He mustn't, Mr. Lennox Brown. You've got to stop him. Well, why should I? Why should I? He's buttered his bread. Now let him lie on it. <laughs> well, I suppose life will go on, sir. Our one-way system's coming to force today, don't they? Oh, that's right, Mildred. Yes, they uncovered the road signs last night. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised that Gregory hasn't been in to congratulate us. It must have affected the traffic. Yeah. Oh, yes, we were just saying our new one-way scheme should have had some effect. Oh, it has, Lennox Brown, it has. London's traffic's flowing smoothly. Sir. London's traffic is flowing smoothly up to Birmingham. <laughs> Birmingham, sir? Yeah, thanks to your scheme, everything moving in London has been funneled into a giant one-way system. This takes it round and round in ever-increasing circles till it finally disappears up the M1 underpass. <laughs> there are now no cars in the metropolis. They've all been sent to the Midlands. Well, are you sure, sir? Oh, why do you think I wasn't in this morning? My car was diverted at nine o'clock and I finally got here on the midday train from Stoke. Well, how could such a thing have happened? All your arrows are facing the wrong way. Where traffic should turn right, your signs force it left and vice versa. Oh, God. What Hitler failed to do in five years bombing, this office has achieved in five weeks bundling. There's no motor transport in the whole of London. Here is the news read by Brian Martin. With no motor traffic for the third day running, Londoners have been finding alternative transport. Newspaper owner Lord Rotherbrook arrived at his office on horseback. His farming correspondent followed with a big scoop. 
MPs have been reaching the House of Commons on scooters, bikes and roller skates, though members of the Cabinet were, as always, reluctant to get their skates on. (laughs) The Prime Minister travelled in a sedan chair carried by two footmen, later identified as Hugh Foot and Michael Foot. (laughs) Cyril Smith used a sedan chair carried by the Bucks Light Infantry. (laughs) Mrs Thatcher and Mr Heath shared a tandem, Mrs Thatcher peddling in front, and Mr. Heath at the back, not paddling. (laughs) Good Lord, we didn't expect to see you two. All hell's let loose. Sir Gregory's furious about that traffic stoppage. No, he isn't. What do you mean, no, he isn't? I just saw him on the stairs. They've decided that London without traffic was a good idea. Uncle George, dear, but it took a week to get the cars back. It cleared the pollution, Mildred. And all those sedan chairs and horse-drawn carriages proved a tourist attraction. A tourist attraction? A glimpse of old London, they said. Tourist bookings are doubled. At least you'll leave us on a happy note, won't you? I'm not leaving one. You and Miss Proudfoot, you were turning professional. We were, but now she won't. She works for the tourist board, you see, and she's got the credit for the jump in bookings. She's been promoted at double salary. So she won't leave. And I can't turn pro on my own, so I'm hanging up my dancing shoes. Well... You're back with us after all, Mr. Lambert. No, 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 wait a minute, no, I didn't. 